Hey everybody, I am Jamie McDonald with The Game Agency and I'm so excited for everybody to be here today. We are going to be talking about how to get your game on. Um, how can you use games to virtually connect with your, with your remote learners? And of course, uh, you know, with everything that's going on in the world today and everybody's still working from home for the foreseeable future, it's more important than ever to be able to keep your employees connected and engaged as, as much as possible. So um, I am the EVP of customer success at the game agency. My goal is to make sure that all of our clients and customers have a really good experience using our games. And we're gonna try something a little bit different today. As you can see on the right side of my screen, I have Jeopardy. And what's really exciting for us is that our company has the only official um, license from Sony and Jeopardy Productions for the Jeopardy game to use for training and education. Um, we spent about a year negotiating with Sony for the rights, and you'll find that when we get to this part of the game, it's very authentic. It, it's the only real digital version out there approved by Sony. And um, when I say we're going to do something a little bit different today, what I mean is I'm going to go through a bunch of slides. I am really excited to share with you, um, you know, why uh, games are so important for learning and how they can really make a big impact. But we're also going to play a live game today. So um, anyone who wants to participate, I'm going to actually have you guys be playing a Jeopardy game. There's going to be some prizes. We're going to give out uh, on the leaderboard that the top player will get $50 from Amazon, second 25 and third player place uh, will get 10 bucks. So hopefully you guys are excited. Um, if you don't want to play, that's totally fine because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing my screen and showing you guys actually how I'm controlling a Jeopardy game. So that if you were to want to use a game like this for your own upcoming happy hours or team training through virtual, uh, you know, whatever virtual platform you're using, you'll be able to see how I do it. So don't feel obligated to play because you can actually see what's going on. And if you also don't play, um, we are going to allow you to play this game after the show um, or after the session for the next uh, week, and, week or two where you will also be able to play uh, or, or earn a, a prize. Um, so at the end of the session, we're going to um, leave questions, but if something comes up, our moderator will address it with me and I'll bring it up and answer some questions during it as well. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys today and let's get going. All right, so what are we going to be discussing today? First and foremost, we're going to talk about the benefits of game-based training, um, five steps on how you can create your own gamified experience within your organization. Um, analytics, data, 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 so important. So we're gonna be going through, um, you know, what kind of data you can collect to really measure the effectiveness of your training, how you can incorporate games into your virtual meetings. Um, you know, with, with everything that's going on today, people need more and more ideas of how to keep people engaged. So we're gonna go through that. And then of course, we're gonna play a virtual Jeopardy game. Now playing a Jeopardy game in this instructor virtual mode is something that any of you can do with any of your video conference platforms, whether you use Zoom or Microsoft Teams, WebEx, Skype, Google Hangouts, Starleaf, anything, okay? So let's get moving. So just a quick background on the game agency. Um, we are, are here to help our uh, customers transform their training. That's our key goal. Um, we've always been a custom game development studio. That's what we've been doing from the beginning. Our founders came from Atari and other publishing companies. So gaming is really deep in our DNA. But a few years ago, we launched a product that is called the Training Arcade. Now this is a game it yourself game authoring tool. It's a tool that has a library of a variety of different games in it. There's no content in the games. The purpose of the tool is to let you build the games yourself. And it's a really, really easy user-friendly um, platform where you can build games out rapidly, typically in under an hour, under 30 minutes sometimes, and you can push those games out live to your learners absolutely everywhere they are. Um, we also have a platform called, called Motivate Cloud. That is a gamified social learning experience platform, uh, similar to some of the other um, LMSs you'll see out there, but it's really gamified and uh, has many social components. And then the last thing I'm excited to share is that we have another platform coming soon in July called Arcades. So if you remember back in the day when you were a kid and you'd go into an arcade and there'd be lots of different games for you to play and you can earn tickets and redeem those for prizes, well, we've taken that digital. So we've uh, created a platform that will allow you to have all of your games or other activities where people can earn points for playing games. They can challenge coworkers, they can compete in other contests. So that's coming. So uh, anyone who wants to learn more about that, you can certainly reach out. And now why do we do this? So the, the ultimate goal is that we really are trying to drive that level of fun and engagement that sometimes is missing in training or when the content may be dull. 
Um, and of course, we're trying to improve their accuracy and knowledge retention. Um, we're, we're, we're allowing people to use these games in a virtual environment, of course, also at live events. Um, you know, someday when the world gets back to normal and people are in face-to-face -face meetings again, and the games are perfect for that environment too. And then, we're, you know, the data that you collect is so important. You know, if, if you only ask someone a three-question quiz at the end of your learning, you know, how did you like this? You're not going to really get any information. So what games provide are so much data on which questions did people get right and how many attempts did it take them before they got right and where are the gaps in the learning? You know, who's doing well, who's not? Let me go back and readdress or reteach the information that may be not sinking in. Um, the, other op the other thing is that you want your learners to be able to access these games absolutely anywhere they are. So if they are, um, uh, you know, if they're web-based games like in our training arcade, they can play the games on their tablet or mobile mobile phones, on their desktop, on their laptop, uh, you know, no matter where they are, whether they're home or in the office. We also want to help trainers become heroes, right? And then the three C's we always talk about are, let's keep your employees connected, collaborating, and competing. Let's get this to be really fun. So let's talk about um, the benefits of game-based training. You know, the worst thing that's going on in the world today, which didn't exist, you know, 20, 30 years ago, is that people are so distracted by everything that's going on. There's social media, there's texting, there's YouTube, there's emails, there's, you know, uh, just so many things that are pulling people into different directions. And how do you grab someone's attention? You know, I think the stat is something like, you only have eight seconds right now to grab someone's attention, which is not great. But employees overall really crave feedback. So you need to be able to get them into a state where they can focus. And games really do provide that focus because, you know, um, I like to, to kind of use this analogy. When you drive a car, you are not supposed to text, right? You can text, but you're not supposed to. But when you drive a car, you can't play a game. There's absolutely no way that you could stay focused and playing a game while you're driving because games really do provide that focus that you're looking for. And in turn, that's gonna hopefully and drive uh, you know, knowledge retention and improvement. There's a variety of different things that you train on, right? It could be anything from sales training, product training, compliance, safety, uh, leadership development, new employee hires, anything like that. So the best thing is to have a variety of different game types so that you can help your learners by mapping the right game type to what it is you're trying to get them to learn or to whatever performance objective you're trying to achieve. In this case, if you're trying to achieve soft skills, so that could be anything like sales training, negotiating, overcoming objections, um, navigating through a conversation, or just putting people into a real life situation where they need to make decisions, um, games are really great for that. One of the games we have in our platform is a scenarios game, which is fully branching. So depending on people's responses, they're gonna be taken down a variety of different paths. So this kind of, um, you know, using games for soft skills really does help drive that emotional intelligence, the communication, problem solving, and of course, collaboration with their colleagues. Um, on the other side of the coin, there's also hard skill training, right? So higher order thinking skills, you know, let's teach people about strategic thinking, let them be able to be better at analyzing, uh, planning, and of course, hopefully they're, you know, adapting to change because we all know things are changing so rapidly right now. So what's going to happen when you use games? Um, you know, games are one of the few formats that, um, you know, and I'll show you this on, a, an, on another slide that really does um, have a huge spike in that knowledge retention. Your learners are going to be more engaged. It's going to increase their attention and retention. They're going to stay more focused. Hopefully, in turn, that's going to drive their confidence. And driving confidence, of course, is also going to drive productivity and more revenue for your business. But overall, they're going to be higher performers. Um, hopefully, they'll, you know, you'll see some behavior changes and knowledge retention, of course. So here are five steps that you can think about when you're putting together a game-based learning strategy. So the first and foremost is you want to focus on the learning as well as what the experience is going to be, right, be like, okay? So no chocolate covered broccoli here. Um, you want to make sure that the games you're building are in line with the performance objectives you're looking to achieve because there are so many different things you're, you know, your organizations are probably trying to do. You don't want to just slap a game at it. You want to make sure you're thinking, you know, really, uh, thoroughly about uh, you know what makes the most sense. The other thing is you don't want to make the game too hard when they're starting off. You want them to be able to kind of gradually learn the game and get comfortable with it and then you know you can make the questions get harder and harder as time goes by. Um, In-game feedback is so key. Uh, within our training arcade platform you have the ability to um, give people feedback. So if they get a question right, great. Don't just say correct. 
maybe give them a trainer reinforcement point, explain to them why that was, or maybe even use some advanced feedback where you can show them a video or an image or something like that after the question's asked so that you're really, you know, explaining, you know, what it was about that that was correct. Um, if they get it wrong, maybe you give them the correct answer or a hint or say try again or something like that. But giving some feedback is really, really crucial. Um, also, you want to be able to encourage your learners and your management to progress. Um, you know, the fact that they can replay games is great because if someone doesn't do well the first time they play, they have another opportunity to play again and again, which is really great. So let's talk about the analytics and, and measurement. Um, you know, as I said before, you don't want to just know that someone did it, right? You want to know how they did. You want to understand if this is working, if it's effective. So um, for instance, let's say you spent, you know, several thousand dollars or even millions of dollars on a big national meeting. You know, you fly all your reps to sit in a room for two or three days to learn about a new drug. So this is just an example. The worst thing that could happen is at the end of those three days, people walk out of there and they forget 80% of what you told them during that meeting. So you want to be able to measure immediately what's going on. So a lot of times what our clients do is they'll use games during a live meeting for, for, and this is for example, um, you know, as a way to break up the day. So maybe they'll say, okay, well, we just spent an hour learning about this topic. Now let's play a game based on this topic. It'll be, you know, maybe a five, 10 minute game experience. Hey everybody, now that the game's over, go take your coffee break. And during that 10 minutes, you could be looking at the data because it's all real time and really understanding, did, did my session work? Did people really understand this? Or where are the gaps? You know, did I notice that maybe there were two or three questions that 70% of my audience missed? So getting that data at your fingertips is so important because when people come back in and take their seats, if it was a live event, you can then go back over it. Or you could say, you know what, that worked really well, let's move on, or hey, we need to talk about some things. And of course, that works the same way if you're doing a virtual meeting, or if you're doing e-learning and you're finding out how people are doing through your LMS and so forth. So you're going to get tons and tons of rich data, both from an individual perspective and as in groups. We did a study of a thousand games in our platform. And what's really interesting is we found that the average person was staying about six minutes per session, but they were coming back on their own free will 2.9 times. So that's about 18 minutes of time. So when was the last time someone walked up to you and said, oh my gosh, your training session was so amazing. I'd like to take that again right now, right? That just doesn't happen. But with games, they really do allow people to progress because at the end of a game, you have the ability to turn on a leaderboard. And if someone sees at the end that they, you know, they see their, their rank and their score and who the top 10 players are, but maybe they didn't make it into the top 10, there's a good chance that they're going to hit that play again button and try to play that game through again to improve their score, to get up on the leaderboard higher and higher. Um, this last stat on the right here was really interesting. We found that there was a 64% lift in knowledge retention from the first time someone played a game to the third time. And because games have that replayability factor, because they're fun and because people want to improve their scores and, and their knowledge, this was a really interesting stat uh, to get them to you know, do that on their own free will. Um, the other thing is you want to turn your, your monologue into a dialogue, right? So there are a lot, of, a lot of different ways that people train today. There's lectures, there's videos, there's demos, discussions. But when you actually put, you, you turn it from a passive to an active learning experience, where they can practice with the content via a game or they can teach others via a group game or something like that, there's going to be a significant impact in the overall knowledge retention because you're turning it from passive to active. So the training arcade I mentioned, so this is one of our products that has a variety of game types in it. Um, we have a ninth game coming out soon, but the game we're focusing on today is Jeopardy. Um, the thing about our Jeopardy game too is that um, it has three modes. It has a single player mode where, you know, you guys can play a Jeopardy, your, your learners can play a Jeopardy game on their own time when they have, you know, availability versus instructor mode for live events and instructor mode for virtual events. We call that VILT, uh, virtual instructor led training. Um, so we're going to talk about that today. So before we get into that, I just want to go over things to consider when you're cre creating a game of hide experience. So the first thing is who is your audience? You know, are, you, are they millennials? Are they an older demographic? What are the, per, you know, the desired performance objectives that you're trying to get out of your learners? And then what kind of environment are, the, are they going to be in? Is this a game that's going to be made available through your LMS? Is it something that you're going to embed into maybe a storyline course or Lectora or Captivate or whatever e-learning authoring tools you need? Is it going to be on a virtual training call or at a live event? So you need to really think about that. And what devices are your people going to be using? 
Um, understand how much time do you want your learner to spend on these games? Um, you know, you could create a game that's just a quick five minute experience, or if it was something more like a scenarios game, maybe it's 10 or 12 or an hour long experience, just depending on what you're trying to do. And how much content do you want to put into those games to make sure that you're keeping it fresh and, and relevant? Number four, do you want your learners to play games just for the sole purpose of boosting their knowledge, which of course is so important, or, you know, you may be a company that has a culture where you want to bring in other elements like competition and challenges and contests, leaderboards. Um, you know, these are all gamification elements. And one thing I always like to talk about is the difference between games and gamification, because a lot of times people will tell me that they already use gamification or that they already use games. And what they mean is that they use leaderboards. They have gamification elements, but the game itself is actually the vehicle for the learning, whereas the is gamification are all the motivating factors that happen with games, including the points and rewards and leaderboards and so forth. And then the last one is determine how you're going to incentivize your learners. Are you going to give them prizes? Maybe your organization doesn't let you do prizes. So maybe it's other things. Maybe it's intangible things like, you know, lunch with a boss or maybe just recognition in front of their peers or something like that. All right, so now we're getting into the fun stuff. How do you incorporate games into your virtual meetings? Um, that image you're seeing there on the right side is actually a number of employees at the game agency. We do an, a Wednesday night happy hour every week. We invite our internal staff, but we also invite our subscribers and our partners and other people to join. So this was us having a lot of fun on one of our, our calls. Um, I imagine that everyone on the call here has uh, access to some sort of virtual um, video conference platform, whether it's, you know, WebEx, Zoom, you know, Microsoft Teams, GoToMeeting, any of these platforms. But an interesting stat that you guys may not know is that on April 9th, Microsoft Teams announced that they hit a new record high of 2.7 billion meeting minutes in one day, right? So everybody is on these, these meetings today. And because they're on these meetings, you need to find more and more ways to, to use those tools to engage people. So we call it online group play. It just turns a meeting into something that's way more interactive than fun. Um, it really helps you train your folks everywhere they are. So, um, you know, if, they, if you have people globally, this is a perfect way to get them together. Of course, you have to worry about the time zone difference, but you can still have everybody participate. Um, and then, of course, you're trying to keep them connected. If you're using some prizes, there's the level of competition, and then there is all the fun. All right, so I'm looking at my clock here. I went through that pretty quick. It's only uh, 2.17 on the East Coast. So this is the part where we're going to get into the games, you guys. Um, I think that they're going to be posting this link in the um, chat of your uh, call. So go ahead if you'd like to play and click this link. If you can't find the link for some reason, go ahead and um, just type in learnit.live slash ATD. That is the bit.ly link that we've posted for this game. And um, again, let me just give you guys a little bit of insight into what's about to happen here. So um, in virtual instructor mode, um, what happens is you have somebody on your team who would be running your virtual call. So today I'm that person. I'm your MC. I'm your host. I'm Alex Trebek, right? Okay. I don't look like Alex Trebek, but I'm your host for today. So whoever's running your virtual call would be the host of this game. They have a control panel where they would actually be able to control the entire game experience. Um, all of your learners who are sitting home in the comfort of their home, wherever they are around the world, would be able to play the game. In the game of Jeopardy, as you guys might know, many of you probably are familiar with this game, um, there are th typically three rounds of Jeopardy, right? There's Jeopardy, Double Jeopardy, and there's Final Jeopardy. Our game was built that way as well. What I've done for sake of time for our call today is I've cut out the middle round. There will be no Double Jeopardy round. We're gonna go right from the Jeopardy game into the Final Jeopardy. Um, if you're playing the game today and you have some uh, positive dollars in your account by the time we hit Final Jeopardy, you will be able to play the last question. If not, you won't. Um, but uh, just a couple other things that I want to mention about um, housekeeping for this game. So a reminder, if you joined late, there will be prizes uh, at the end of this live session. Um, the, the top person on the leaderboard will get $50 from Amazon uh, gift card, then $25 for the second, and $10 for the third. Um, so one thing I wanted to tell you guys is that I heard from ATD that some of these sessions have had thousands of people join, which is so awesome. And I really hope there's thousands of you on today. But for sake of ease and not making things so crazy, what I'd like to try to do is cut off the amount of people who are playing today to about 100 if I can. 
So the first people who register in the game are going to be able to um, participate. Now I have not initiated the game yet. Here, let me, uh, let me do this. I'm gonna go into the back end of our platform. Um, so what I mean by I haven't initiated the game yet is that no one can do anything. So if you click that link, you'll be seeing on your screen what I'm seeing here. There will be no buttons for you to click yet and that's intentional. That's because I have not started the game yet. For anyone who is not going to play, you can watch my screen. I'm sharing my screen. You could see what I'm doing to control it. And the purpose of you watching me do this is so that if you guys decided that this was interesting for your organization, you could see what I'm doing to control the experience. For anybody who is going to play the game, don't bother looking at my screen. It'll, you, there's no reason for you to have to toggle back and forth between the browser that you're using to play the game and watching me do what I'm doing because we're recording this and you'll be able to look at it later if you wanted to go back. And then of course, anyone who's on the call, if you want a demo of how this works with your team, someone from my team would be happy to schedule a demo for you. Uh, a couple other things. Um, we do offer a 30 day free trial of the, of the Training Arcade platform, which would include Jeopardy and all the other games. It would allow you to um, go in for 30 days, build out your own sample games, test the platform, see how easy it is to use to build out your own games with your own content, and then test it with your teams. Use it on your next upcoming happy hour or your next training session to see what you think. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, uh, okay, as soon as I click initiate game, that's gonna prompt everybody to register. When you register, whatever name you use for your first name, that's what's gonna populate the leaderboard that's gonna be used in this game. And periodically throughout the game, I'm going to be showing the leaderboard. So um, you know, you'll be able to tell how you're doing. And um, the other thing is that um, when you guys make your selection, so in the game of Jeopardy, if you're all familiar with it, usually the question is posed as what is, and you have to type in the answer. You know, Usually it's like a one or two word answer. In our game, when we were building it, and Sony thought this was a great option, we decided to include multiple choice as a question type because many uh, tr you know, companies build their training in the form of multiple choice questions. So you're gonna see a variety of different question types in this game, multiple choice and text input. I'll give you a little bit of hint before um, you answer which one it's gonna be, but if it is a text input, don't type the words what is, because that, that will already be on your screen. Just type in what the one or two word answer will be, okay? Um, the other thing is once you've made your selection while you're playing, you can't change your answer. So um, just letting you guys know that. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, there are about, there's about 35 seconds that I've given everyone to answer. So if you don't answer in time, then you won't get the question marked correctly. Um, when you're building this game, you can build it with uh, whatever timer you want. And there's a lot of flexibility. You'll also notice that um, in many of our questions, we have what we call visual clues. So there may be an image or a video that you see before the question comes up. Um, lastly, every time uh, somebody, uh, every time there's a question that comes up, every single person playing gets to answer. So, you know, in the real game of Jeopardy, there's three people that go up to a podium and they have to buzz in and one person answers. The way we built this digitally was so that all of you can answer. Um, now, Normally when we do this, you have everybody's picture on camera and you're unmuted and people can talk. But since nobody will be able to talk while I'm playing this, I'm going to actually pick the categories for you. But I'm gonna call out people. I'm gonna be able to see on the back end who's doing well, who's answering questions fast. The way that the scoring works is based on not just um, your accuracy, you know, if you get it right, it's also based on speed. So let's say 100 of you play and 70 of you get a question right the person who's gonna be higher up on the leaderboard is actually the person who answered the fastest. So try to be speedy here. Um, all right, so I, uh, if anything else comes up that I can think of, I'll talk about it as we go. But um, you'll see here that we are playing this game in virtual mode. It also has live mode, but we're not live today. So, well, we're, li we're live virtual, right? <laughs> Over here, it says zero people have registered because I haven't started yet. As soon as I initiate the game and people start to register, this number will populate. And when it gets to about 100, I'm gonna start the game, okay? So hopefully there are lots of you on the game who are looking forward to playing. So I'm gonna go ahead and initiate the game now. Um, you will see a start button pop up on your screen. So anyone who's playing, please go ahead and click the start button. After you see that, um, it's gonna ask you to register, okay? So go ahead and register. I'm gonna give people time. I could see already that we have two people registered. Great. Alejandro, you are the first to register. Now we're at nine people. 20. Very cool. 
Um, and by the way, I have the um, Jeopardy music muted at the moment, just while people are registering. But as soon as you're done registering, I will turn it on. Wow, we're at 73 people registered already. I really wish I could have more than, you know, 100-ish people play, but I'm trying to contain things uh, just because of the way that our format is. But don't worry, everyone will be able to play this another time, I promise. All right, we're at 118, I'm starting the game. Uh, for those of you who didn't get a chance, I'm sorry, so sorry. Okay, we're actually at 139 people now. All right, wow, okay, good. So here's the way that we're gonna start it. You guys, uh, whoever's watching me control the back panel, you're gonna be seeing what I'm doing here. But for those of you who are at home, what you're seeing on your screen will mirror what I'm seeing on my screen, okay? So this is the Jeopardy board. And for those of you who don't know, this is going to be a 90s game, okay? We're doing 90s TV and movies, 90s music, 90s sports and 90s events, okay? I should, probably should have said that beforehand so that those of you who wanted to play 90s uh, would be able to. All right, I'm gonna unmute the player audio right now. And uh, Alejandro, normally I would call on you since you're the first person who registered. If you're looking at my screen, I could see the top 10 people. We have Alejandro, Jana, Dana, Julie, Kim, Lori, Tony, Benjamin, Chip, and Nate. And then if I clicked into the later uh, ones, I could see you know, the next 10 people and so forth. All right, so I'm gonna kick this off and pretend that I asked Alejandro to pick a category. So Alejandro, thanks so much for picking Sports for 200 today. So remember guys, I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna be the host, so I'm reading the question. Oh my gosh, look at this, Alejandro, you did so good today that you clicked on the Daily Double. There's one Daily Double that comes up randomly. Um, it just so happened that the Daily Double came up at the very beginning of the game, which means you're all on a level playing field. So that blue ball there, go ahead and move that blue ball all the way to the right if you want to wager um, you know, the most amount of money. Or if you're nervous about not knowing the next question, then don't wager all of it. But I'm going to give you guys each a few seconds to wager. And as soon as you're done wagering, I will then move on to the clue. It's really a question, but you know, in the game of Jeopardy, they call it a clue. Okay, so let's get going now. I'm gonna click hide wager. And here's your visual clue. Uh, it shows up a little bit faster on my screen than on everybody else's, so I'm gonna give you guys a minute. Uh, the visual clue you should all be seeing is of an ice skater. And now I'm going to show and read the question out loud. Okay, here we go, guys. In 1994, this Olympic figure skater became embroiled in controversy when her ex-husband orchestrated an attack on her fellow U.S. skating rival. Okay, so that's the question. Looks like there's actually 183 of you playing. Wow, okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now, guys, and click show possible answers. When I do this, everyone playing needs to go ahead and um, make your selection as quickly as possible. And just remember, you can't change your answer. Ready? go. And for anybody who's watching my screen, you'll be able to see over here the current response count. It looks like 77 have already answered. And uh, again, guys, this is time. So you have to get your answer in before 35 seconds is up. 101 of you have answered. 105. And if you don't know the answer, just guess because you will be deducted points if you don't make a selection. There's about 70 of you who haven't answered. Go ahead, guys, if you can. You know, one more thing I should have mentioned, and, and uh, hopefully this isn't becoming a problem with anybody, is that um, Internet Explorer is not the best browser to be using for this. Uh, Chrome is really great. Um, you know, so is Firefox or um, Safari and so forth. So for those of you on IE, if you're experiencing any, anything, um, I should have mentioned that earlier. Okay, so the timer has run out. Uh, 111 of the 183 answered. I'm going to go ahead and show the correct answer. Correct answer should have been Tanya Harding. In 1994, Harding pleaded guilty to conspiracy to hinder prosecution. And as a result, the United States Figure Skating Association banned her for life. Now, in this particular question, we wanted to show you what advanced feedback looks like. So I'm going to click this next feedback button, and it's going to bring up some additional information. This is a chance for you, if you were building a game, to give the learner some more information about that question. So for the movie called I, Tanya, which I watched on a plane one time, it was awesome. They used beer to get the hair just right. Lead hair designer uh, Adrutha Lee made four wigs for actress Margot Robbie to wear, designing them using products and dyes from, from the time. Her secret weapon for getting that crispy, crunchy look, cheap beer. You're not going to get that bang to stand up like that with just mousse, she told Hollywood. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go back to the board. 
you'll notice that the question that was just asked is gone. And if I scroll down here, for those of you who are looking, it looks like Barbara, you answered the fastest, but you weren't correct. Gwendolyn, you answered in one second fa uh, f you know, uh, fast, uh, as well as Melissa, Christopher, Nick, Josiah, a lot of you answered quickly, but Gwendolyn was just a bit faster. So Gwendolyn, if we were doing this where you could speak, I would be asking you to pick the next category, but since you're not here, I'm just gonna assume that you want TV and movies for 600, okay? So here we go. Here's your visual clue. Hopefully you guys could see that. I'll give you a second. It says Forrest Gump, if you can't. And now I'm going to click the actual question clue. In Forrest Gump, the 1994 winner of six Academy Awards, the main character met this many United States presidents. Okay, you guys ready? Was it one, two, three, or four United States presidents? Go ahead and make your selections. I see 26 have answered so far, 56. 80, waiting on about 100 people. 97, 106, awesome. 113. And by the way, if, if we were doing this on a live where everyone's kind of looking at each other, there'd be a lot more chit chat going on because this is a really fun way to have interaction when you're playing this game. But because of the way we're doing it, um, you know, on this platform, no one was able to talk. So I'm going to be doing all the talking for you. Okay, the timer ran out. 122 of you were, an, uh, were able to answer. The correct answer was three presidents. Forrest Gump met three presidents, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, and Richard Nixon. Very cool. And if I go down below here, it looks like Matthew, you answered correctly. And Blake, you and Blake answered in zero seconds flat. That's really impressive. So it looks like many of you got this right. Um, that's awesome. Matthew, I'm going to ask you to pick the next category. How about we go with music for 400, Matthew? Okay, cool. Here's your visual clue. I'm going to give you guys a second because I know there's a, a, a quick lag. Hopefully you, you guys might recognize this city. And here is your clue. This Seattle grunge band is the talent behind Nevermind, a hit album released in 1991 that sold over 30 million copies worldwide, making it one of the best selling albums of all time. All right, just to let you guys know, this is a text input question, which means you have to type in the answer. Underneath the what is, there will be a line and you're gonna type right on that line. Do not write what is in, just answer who the band is. Okay, ready? Go. Jamie, can I interrupt you for a second? Sure. Can you mute the player audio? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Sure. Awesome, thanks. Yep. <clears throat> so as the controller, you guys, I have the ability to mute player audio. So I did that um, just because um, if there's feedback from different people playing, it, you know, it can be distracting. So you can choose when you're running these games whether you want the audio to be on or not. So it looks like we have 91 have answered so far. 96. Hopefully we'll get through this game before the end. I'm gonna to have to try and move a little faster here. Okay, 101. And 107. Okay, 180 of you got to answer. The correct answer was of course Nirvana. Hopefully a lot of you guys, guys got that right. Nevermind was the second studio album by Nirvana, an American grunge band formed in Seattle, Washington by Kurt Cobain and Chris Novoselic. Okay, Novoselic. Um, it looks like a lot of you got that right. Fantastic. They're an awesome band. Uh, great band from the 90s. Okay, I'm going to just do a quick uh, show the leaderboard. Let's see how everybody's doing. So it looks like, Blake, you are in the lead with 1,600 points. Uh, there's many, many of the other people on the top 10 are actually tied with you, but you're in the top because you were faster than everybody else. So those of you at home playing, if you're looking at this top 10 leaderboard, but you're not in the top 10, in that orange bar, you'll still be able to see your rank and, uh, you know, and score against everybody else. All right. So the cool thing is when you're hosting these games, it's not like just the top 10 people get to see how they're doing. Everybody gets to. So I'm going to dismiss leaderboard now, and we're going to go on from there. So uh, Blake, since you uh, answer the fastest correctly, I'm going to go for events for 200 for you. Here's your um, visual clue, you guys. Now I'm gonna show you the actual question. In 1999, this computer virus became a major headache to internet emailers around the world. 
Okay, ready? Was it? The Melissa virus, the Jennifer virus, the Sarah virus, or the Stephanie virus. And you guys may notice that um, at home that you may not see these answers in the same order that I read them. That's intentional because when we built the game, we made it so that um, all the answer choices are kind of jumbled up for different players. So I see that 72 people have answered so far, 87. What's really cool about being able, as the person running the, the meeting, to be able to see the current response count, you know, you know, because you have no visibility, because people aren't there with you, it gives you some insight into, you know, uh, when people are done answering, or you can wait until the timer runs out, which is what I'm doing here. So um, 114 have answered and go. Okay, so the correct answer, you guys, was the Melissa virus. It was first discovered in March 1999 and effectively shut down email and flooded servers, if any of you guys remember that. And this question has some advanced feedback too. The Melissa virus cost an estimated $80 million worth of damage. The perpetrator, a programmer named David Lee Smith, was arrested in 1999 and sentenced to 10 years, but only served for 20 months. Only a year later, the I Love You virus, created by Filipino Onel de Guzman, caused 5.5 to 8.7 billion damages worldwide and estimated to cost 15 billion to remove the worm. So again, this is an example of something that you could do to provide additional insight for your learners. So let's go back to the board there. It looks like Joey, way to go, Joey. You are top uh, in one second flat. I'm gonna pick sports for 400, Joey. Hopefully you like sports. Here's your clue, you guys, your visual clue. And the next question is, this MLB player hit the most home runs in the 1990s. I know there were a lot of them. Okay, ready? Here we go. Was it Sammy Sosa? Ken Griffey Jr., Mark McGuire, or Barry Bonds? Hopefully you're all having fun. I know you can't talk to me, but hopefully everyone's enjoying this from the comfort of your home. I see 86 have answered so far. Ninety-six. Come on, guys. Just waiting on a few more. I have a feeling that even though it's showing 183 players, when I cut the game off to start it, people registered, but some of you may not be able to play. So big apologies for that. Okay, 113 of you have answered. 115, great. The correct answer was Mark McGuire. McGuire and Sosa broke Roger Maris's long-standing record of 61 home runs. McGuire broke Maris's record on September 8th against the Cubs and finished with 70 home runs while Sosa finished with 66. Okay, so if I look down here, it looks like Blake, way to go. You're back up on top. But Blake, since I called on you already, why don't we give Yolanda a chance since Yolanda, you answered second. Yolanda, how about music for 600? <laughs> All right, guys, here's your visual clue. That looks fun. Here we go. Rolling Stone magazine described them as the most important band of the 90s. In concert, they were known for their improvisational style, and in supermarkets, they were associated with one of Ben and Jerry's most popular ice cream flavors. Oh my gosh, I actually went to see this band. Okay, was it Big Tasty, Dave Matthews Band, Fish, or Blues Traveler? And I have a personal anecdote too. Blues Traveler actually played at the beach where I live and at the very end of the concert gave his harmonica to my daughter who was I think like five at the time. <laughs> okay, we have 91 players so far or answers. 103. And, and for anyone who's watching what I'm doing, you can see how easy this is, right? There's only one button at a time for you to click. So you can't really mess up being the instructor of one of these sessions. So 118 of you answered. The correct answer was fish. They developed a large and dedicated following has sold over 8 million albums. And let's see what happens when we click the next feedback. Not many bands can draw close to 100,000 fans to ring in the new millennium in the middle of Alligator Alley in Southern Florida. Fish rewarded them with a truly epic eight hour set from midnight to sunrise on New Year's Day. This was a magical night that took all the anxiety around Y2K and funneled it into a truly legendary concert. I saw them play at the Great Went up in uh, Lime, Maine, I think it was many years ago. Okay, cool. So um, Benjamin, 
Nice job on fish. You answered it really fast. Benjamin, I think that you like music. So I'm going to go with music for 200. Here's your visual clue. All right, and the question is, the Spice Girls, an English pop girl group, originally went by this name prior to switching their management in 1995. Okay, was it Spicy, Dead Disco, Touch, or Sugar Babes? Let's see, 56 have answered. I wish I could chat, chit chat with you guys today. <laughs> 61, 70. Maybe I should have made the timer a little bit shorter for this for the purpose of time, but that's okay. 80, 89. Waiting on a few more. 91. 97. Okay, 97. All right, the correct answer, you guys, was touch. The Spice Girls, originally known as touch, have been labeled the biggest pop phenomenon of the 1990s due to their international record sales and iconic symbolism. All right, awesome. Now, before we find out who answered that the fastest, let's take a peek at the leaderboard. All right, so Blake, you are still at the top. Nice going, followed by Joey, Jesse, Nate, Rachel, Amanda, Christina, M, Benjamin, and Sue, Alice. Okay, everybody else, you'll be able to see how you did. So let's see who answered that the fastest. Wow, lots of wrong answers. No one in the top 10 got that right. Kim, nice, wit nice going, Kim. All right, you were the first one to get that right the fastest. So Kim, I think that you want to know what's going on in TV and movies for 400. Show me the money. Okay, here's your visual clue. This movie debuted in 1996, starred Tom Cruise with memorable lines such as, show me the money, you had me at hello, and you complete me. Such a good movie. Okay, ready guys? Was it Jerry Maguire, Eyes Wide Shut, Risky Business, or Top Gun? 75 of you have answered already. I bet you all know this movie very well. I love Renee Zellweger in this. Okay. 90 of you have answered. We still have a little bit of time. Hundred and three. I definitely should have lowered the time on this. That's okay. 107. All right. Leaving on just another second. 109. Okay, the correct answer was, of course, Jerry Maguire. It was nominated for five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor, and Best Supporting Actor. Awesome. So let's see, uh, Kim, now, I'm assuming that's the same Kim. Way to go, Joey, Molly, Jen. All right, I'm gonna call on someone random here, Roshni. How about Roshni, you pick the next category. Oh, you want events for 400? <laughs> sure, okay, here we go, Roshni. Here is your clue, everybody. Take a good peek at that. Hmm, what is that? Ready? In 1994, this pro football Hall of Famer turned actor turned broadcaster was televised in his Ford Bronco being chased on a Los Angeles highway by police as the suspect for murdering his ex-wife. I'm sure we all know this. Okay, ready? This is a text input. Go ahead and type in the answer, guys. Don't type in what is or who is, just type in the name. 41 of you. And, and you could use, um, you know, when you're, when you're building a text input question into our game, you could put in a variety of different answer options so that, you know, people don't have to necessarily match it exactly as you wrote it. So you could have put like a first name, a last name, you know, you could have put, um, uh, both names, you could have put initials. So sorry if I gave a hint to anyone who didn't know. Okay, 93 people have answered so far. Just waiting on another couple seconds here. 96. 97. All right, the correct answer was OJ Simpson. So if you put in OJ or Simpson or OJ with the periods, you would have been right. An estimated 100 million people worldwide watched the verdict announcement. Long distance telephone call volume declined by 58%.
Trading volume on the New York Stock Ex Exchange decreased by 41%. So much work stopped that the verdict cost an estimated 480 million in lost productivity. Wow, that is crazy. That is nuts. Okay, and it looks like, Blake, you're still in the top there. Uh, Karen, Charity, let's call on Charity here. Charity, you want sports for 600? Sure. <laughs> okay, here's your visual clue, you guys. And by the way, this could be a video. You can put videos in here. And with all the other games in the Training Arcade platform, you also can put images and videos to tell a story or bring your questions and storyline to life. In 1985, 1995, this Major League Football quarterback retired after winning four Super Bowls, being named Super Bowl Most Valuable Player three times, and setting a Super Bowl career record for most passes without an interception. Okay, here we go. Was it Joe Montana, Dan Marino, John Elway, or Troy Aikman? Again, if you don't know the answer, just guess. See, 46 people, 64. Hopefully you guys like 90s trivia. And if anyone's interested, we actually do, maybe I said this before, I can't remember, but every Wednesday night for at least the next few weeks, we do a 80s happy hour um, that our company hosts. And I think tonight's gonna be 80s trivia, if you guys wanna join. I think Joanne will post the link for you. Okay, so we have 92 people have answered so far. 98 and time. Okay, so the correct answer was Joe Montana. He earned the nickname Joe Cool for his ability to stay calm at key moments and comeback kid for his history of rallying his teams from late game deficits. All right, let's see who did well on that one. Uh, looks like Benjamin, you were fastest, Blake, Joey, Kyle, Matthew, Gwendolyn, awesome. I'm gonna go with Jody this time, Jody with an I. Um, actually, Jody, before you pick a category, let's show the leaderboard. All right, guys, let's see if Blake's in the lead. Yes, Blake, you are still in the lead. Joey, you're, you gotta be a little bit faster if you wanna catch up to Blake. Okay, um, awesome. So hopefully you guys are taking a peek at how you're doing. There are three people at the top tied for 4,400. If it stays that way, you guys will be the uh, people who win the prizes, but let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna dismiss the leaderboard and I'm gonna ask Jody with an I to pick a category. I'm gonna pick TV and movies for 200, Jody. All right. Here's your visual clue. Let's see what it is. In this movie, Jack Nicholson played the role of Colonel Nathan R. Jessup and was famous for the line, you can't handle the truth. Okay, <laughs> did I sound like him? All right, here we go. Was it Memphis Bell, Gettysburg, Top Gun, or A Few Good Men? Let's see, 74 have answered well. That was quick. 89. I think the most amount that an was answered on any question was around 115 or 118, something like that. So far, okay, 95 have answered. And by the way, you guys, um, the stats from the games that you run using Jeopardy like this are all exportable later um, as a CSV file. And you can even look at it by session. So if you played a game with many different teams at different times, you could look, at, look up the data by session time. All right, so 102 people have answered so far. The correct answer was A Few Good Men. My husband loves this movie. This line was famously said in A Few Good Men, a movie with star-studded cast, including Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, Demi Moore, Kevin Bacon, Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr., and Kiefer Sutherland. And let's check out this advanced feedback here. Aaron Sorkin wrote this play on bar napkins while bartending. So this is really interesting. His sister had recently joined the Navy JAG Corps when she called him one morning to tell him about a case she was working on involving a hazing gone wrong. Sorkin then worked as a bartender at Broadway's Palace Theater, and while patrons were taking in the first act of La Caja Full, he began writing A Few Good Men on some cocktail napkins. So that is pretty cool. And it looks like, Benjamin, you got that, well, See a lot of the same faces up here doing really, really well. Okay, so um, at this point, whoever I called on would have to pick the last question. So let's go ahead and do events for 600. Here's your visual clue. And the question or the clue is, in 1990, this South African man was released from prison after serving 27 years. Just four years later, he was elected to president of the country. Okay. Was it Tony Blair, Boris Yeltsin, King Hussein, or Nelson Mandela? 
82 have answered. 90. Jen, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to unmute the player audio for a minute. I just want people to be able to hear what happens next. Hopefully it won't be distracting. Okay, 93 have answered. 97. And by the way, you guys, Johnny Gilbert, who does the voiceover for the Real Jeopardy game on TV, he also does the voiceover for our game. So I had the, the audio off, but normally you'd be able to hear him say things like, that's correct, or I'm sorry, or try again, or you know, things like that. So hopefully you, you'll be able to hear that now. Um, the correct answer, you guys, was N Nelson Mandela. He was a South African anti-apartheid revolutionary, political leader who served as the country's first black head of state and the first elected in a fully representative democratic election. All right, awesome. So now what happens here, you guys, oh wait, let me show the leaderboard. Oh, the leaderboard pops up. Okay, so normally we go on to double jeopardy, but we skip that round for sake of time. So we're gonna go straight to the final jeopardy round, which is only one question. Blake, you were on the lead with 5,200, followed by Joey and Jesse. So it looks like if you guys get this question right, you may be taking home the prizes. I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss the leaderboard and then you will see Final Jeopardy pop up and you'll hear on your screen if you are eligible to play. So if you see, it says, um, you know, you've qualified for Final Jeopardy, awesome. Um, anyone who has qualified for Final Jeopardy, the category is television. And at this time, I would like you to wager. So go ahead again and take that blue ball and move it as far right as you'd like. So if you get the question right, of course you get as many points added to your score. And if you get it wrong, it gets deducted. So I'm gonna give everyone just another few seconds here to um, place your wager. I know we only have nine minutes left of this and I wanna to get to questions. So sorry, this game ran so long. All right, I'm gonna click hide wager. Hopefully you guys are all ready. Here's your clue. The visual clue is this. Okay, take a peek at the clue. And now I'm going to ask the final Jeopardy question, which is, in Saved by the Bell, a close-knit group of friends went through their teen years together while attending this school in Palisades, California. All right, you guys, ready? It's multiple choice. Was it Rydell, Degrassi, Bayside, or Ridgemont? Go ahead and place your answer. I don't know how many of you qualified, so um, I'm just going to wait for the timer to run out. Looks like 61 have answered. That's awesome. At least 61 of you qualified for Final Jeopardy. 73. Jen, get those questions ready. And anyone, any, you guys, if we don't answer some of the questions you've posed, we'll try to do that in the chat, uh, you know, in our session afterwards. And you can always reach out to us to answer questions later. 84 of you have qualified, 85, awesome. Okay, the big reveal is right now, you guys. Let's see who actually won those prizes. The correct answer was Bayside. There was only one classroom in Bayside School and it was rearranged for different scenes and subjects. The set still exists and can be seen in that. So Raven and iCarly. Okay, well, let's take a peek at what happened here. Looks like Matthew got that right. Blake, you stayed on top, way to go. Blake, Joey, and Jesse, you were neck and neck the whole time. That is awesome. So um, Joanne and Jen, hopefully one of you are recording uh, who won this and we will reach out to you guys to give you your prize. For anybody else, um, I really, I'm sorry you didn't win the prize, but I hope you had fun. Um, we are, as I said before, more than happy to jump in and show you guys this via a demo or we could schedule a call or anything. But let's take questions now, Jen. Hi, Jamie. Um, we have lots of questions. So right. since we only have a little bit of time, we'll have to give quick answers. Okay. Um, a couple people asked about languages and translations. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so... Um, Thank you, Jen. So we do have the platform um, translated into 16 different languages and we have a very nifty translation tool. So what I mean by that is we have already um, translated the back end of our game. So the, the, the start button, the tutorial on how to play, the game over, the leaderboard, those have already been translated. When it comes to you putting in your own content, we don't translate for you. So what you do is you build the game in one language first, whatever default language you want, that could be English. And then you can download a spreadsheet that would include all of the information you already put in in English. And to the right of that would be different columns for other languages. You could just um, 
put your translations in there and then you load the spreadsheet back in and the game would automatically be populated in all the languages that you want the game to be in. And you only need to make one game to send out to all your learners because what happens is on the opening screen, the learners will find the drop down menu with all the language you, languages that you chose to translate it in and they can pick their default language. And as soon as they pick it, it will automatically change the game into that local language. Okay, great. Um, somebody asked whether the contestants have to see the leaderboard or does the person running the game, I'm sorry, does the person running the game have to show it? They're wondering about GDPR and privacy. No, absolutely not. The person running the game does not need to show it. In fact, the only reason I'm showing it now is because I'm sharing my screen, but you could be controlling a virtual Jeopardy game, or by the way, this is also available in trivia. Um, with out sharing your screen. So you control it, people play at home, but there's no leaderboard to be shown. You can choose or not choose to display the leaderboard. But you know, the truth is, you could also just choose to ask people for initials. You know, you don't have to ask them to put their first name in. Um, you could ask them for whatever. And if you were doing this with teams, you could al also ask people to register with teams, or maybe you could say, hey, I wanna know what region you're in or what department you're in. You could do a lot of fun stuff with groups to um, show leaderboards in the form of groups as well. Okay, great. Um, someone asked about whether there were pre-built options, such as a 90s or an 80s game, or does everything need to be built out? They want to yeah, yeah. So um, the, the, the Training Arcade is a do-it-yourself platform, so it is meant for you to build your own games yourself. Now, having said that, if you need help, we do provide services beyond the subscription. I, and I may have even forgotten to tell you this. The, the Training Arcade is an annual subscription. So you can purchase it for a year and you can choose one game or you can choose the whole eight pack or there'll be a ninth game coming out soon. Um, if you, you know, if someone on your team doesn't have the bandwidth or they just don't want to use the tool to build the games, we certainly can do that for you. But as far as having preloaded content into your um, platform, when you sign up for an account, there is no, uh, there are no games in there, but we have talked about it. And I think we probably will soon be putting in, um, you know, a, at least one sample into every game type into um, accounts in the very near future. Okay, great. Um, someone also asked about player data, where it's housed. Is it on our server or theirs? Great, great question. So yes, guys. Um, the games are all web-based, which means they're hosted in the cloud. They are hosted on our servers. We use AWS servers. They cannot be hosted on other servers and they cannot be used offline. So even if you download the game as a SCORM package and you load it into your LMS, the learners can play the games directly from your LMS, but they're still technically hosted in the cloud. Now all the data would live inside of our analytics dashboard, which is over here. Um, and all you have to do is go into a game and you would be able to find the information there. Oops, sorry, I don't want to show people's data, so I'm going to take that off. Um, so, um, uh, you know, if, you're, if, the games are avail if, if the games are being placed into your LMS, what will happen, even though they're hosted in the cloud, is the LMS, or, or sorry, the SCORM data that is captured will report in transit in real time directly into your LMS. So things like um, who they are, high score, level of completion, all of that will be immediately trans, uh, you know, uh, available to you in the LMS, but all the other data that you can collect that our dashboard inside the training arcade collects would be something where you'd have to log in and see that data. So that's things like, you know, um, exactly which questions people asked and, and uh, which answers they chose and how many attempts it took them before they got it right and how did the groups do as a whole and all the aggregate data and stuff like that. Great. And somebody did also ask, can the analytics be exported into an outside application such as Excel? We do, yes. So you can, you can download the, the, um, the spreadsheet as a CSV file and convert it into an Excel, um, but we also have APIs. So there are other ways for us to um, integrate our platform into other uh, systems that you guys might use. Okay, and um, are there any licensing or copywriting considerations they should worry about with Jeopardy? Trademark licensing? So, yeah, so um, the games in the training arcade platform are specifically meant to be used for your own internal employee training. Or if you're a company who provides training as, you know, like a, if you're a, an agency or a, you know, a company that builds training for companies, it's always meant to be used for internal employee training. So um, with the Jeopardy brand, um, our license allows you to use the games for internal employee training. If you were to say, hey, we want to use game, the Jeopardy uh, brand and games for marketing. That's a different story. We have to get special approval from Sony for you to do that. 
Um, but as far as um, you using the game as part of your license, if you got a subscription of our platform, then no, as long as you're using it for internal employee training, you're perfectly um, uh, good. Just make sure that any content you put into the games is content that you have a right to be using. Okay, great. Um, and I think we have one minute left. Um, some people are asking about the black screen that they got, even though they were really fast to register. Well, it's possible, guys, because of the, the amount of people. Um, so there were people who registered, but I have a feeling that because I started the game before you were done, some of you may not have been able to play. So um, again, I apologize if that was the case, but what we will do is as soon as ATD posts this video in the session, we are going to be converting the game that you just saw here played from an instructor mode into a single player mode. So you guys will be able to play that game again on your own. And we're gonna give you until next Friday, June 12th at 5 p.m. Eastern, whoever is the highest up on the leaderboard at that time will win a $50 Amazon gift card. So not to worry. And if there's any questions, other questions about that, we can address it offline. Okay, great, it's three o'clock. So we'll, um, they can connect with us and we'll certainly answer some of these other questions. There were several we didn't have time to. Uh, Perfect, and this is my, in case it hasn't shut off yet, you guys, this is my contact information. Please feel free to reach out for a demo, to get a link for a free trial. Hopefully Jen and Joanne um, have been able to post the link in there. It's a 30 day trial again. And I'm just so excited that you guys were able to join today. I hope you had fun. And um, hopefully you can join us on one of our Wednesday night happy hours. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.